we start looking at some of the proof details, it can become a bit more complicated. But let's go through them for the sake of completeness. What we want to prove is, if you recall the program looper, which is shown here, what we want to prove is if I run the machine of looper, right? So the, the thing that calls m with x and then acts upon the result. As we see here, the result is either going to be accept or loop, right? So what we need to prove is if the whole thing does not loop, that must mean that the machine m accepts it. And let's try to understand what, why that is the case. So we know that the result of this whole thing, right, this whole Turing machine, it received some input called m on x, and then it either accepted, returned accept, or returned loop. So what we need to think is the case where it does not return loop, and that could only be the case where r is true, right? Because we want the case where it, there is no case in, it, in which it rejects. So the only case where it's not loop is when it accepts. Now what we have to do is we have to think about the program's execution, right? That's what we would do if we were thinking about if I got an output of a function, how did it get to that output? That's basically what you're thinking in this proof. Um, so for the whole thing to return except, R has to be true, right? For R to be true, the machine has to accept X, right? So if the machine accepts X, that means the machine is lower caps, lowercase m, and the x is going to be i, so that means that m, if I run m with i, I will get an accept. That is to say, mach Turing machine m accepts input i. So that's what we want to want to try to prove. How do we do that? Well, the first thing we do is we need to open up the definition of looper, just to make things simpler. And after we do that, we're kind of in a stand still here. Why? Because we have a negation, right? Whenever we have a not equals, that's the same as saying if i equals loop, then we get to a contradiction. We get false, right? Uh, that's how not is defined. So if we do unfold not in age, so we kind of have this, so we cannot use it, right? We would have, we can only use it if we had run of the whole thing. Um, so how do we prove that run m accepts? Well, the, the solution to that answer is, well, run m i is just a function. So why don't we just do a case analysis on the result of calling m with i? Right? So we consider all possible cases where given m and i, what could that be? Right. So if I run my Turing machine, I give it an input, it could do one of three things. Either it accepts, either it rejects, or it loops. So let's do a case analysis on the on what the machine M does with input I. So in the first case, we got actually let me kind of make this more explicit. In the first case, we got that the machine M has accepted, and when that's the case, the res, the goal trivially holds, right? Because that's what we wanted to prove. So we just say um, reflexivity. Second case is we know that the machine ran with uh, rejected the input, right? Machine M rejected input I. So since it rejected input I, could it be the case? So now what we have to think is, okay, if I run the whole thing, so if I replace this by calling M with I, I know that machine M will reject. So if it rejects, this means that this R is gonna be a false, right? So if this R is gonna be a false, then I'm going to return loop. But our assumption says that the whole thing cannot return loop, right? It must return something else than loop. So what, me, what, this, what that means is that we can contradict this assumption, right? Because this assumption does not hold. So we can use the tactic contradict to prove that I can... to prove the reverse of this right so let's try to prove the reverse we do contradict h and now what we need to prove is 
that I can, if I run this whole thing, it will get loop. Right? That's what we know, right? Because we know that the machine M rejects. So if it rejects, what is it going to do? Well, it's going to loop, right? Because this returns R and then goes to the dead flat branch. So how do we take care of a result like this? Whenever you see run built, you want to call the tactics run simple because that kind of simplifies your assumptions and goals. So I do that and now I have something way simpler to understand. Now what do I have? I have on the bottom, I have an mlet, right? And I know that the whole thing returns loop. Okay. But I also know, I know one more thing. I know that the machine M rejects input i. So I know if this whole thing is called, then this will get a false. So if I do a search, let's look at our constructors. We notice that there's one constructor called run sequence reject, which is used to compose whenever the machine rejects. And that's what we have, right? So now I'm going to use the constructor of the case where the machine rejects. I do that. Now I have two cases to prove. First one is I need to show that if I call the machine M with input I, it's going to re reject. And if I do a search, I see that this is a very trivial case. I just need to use not this one, but this one. Run call EQ. The other case is, well, if you run loop, you have to return. That's the simple constructor of run rep. The second case is going to be almost the same. What do we need to prove? We know that MI is going to loop. So if it's going to loop, this call loops is what we're seeing here. So if this call loops, the whole thing must loop. But we're saying that it does not loop. So let's contradict the assumption H. Now, similarly to the other case, right? We have a run built in the goal, so we simplify it. Now we only have to prove a run construct. And if we do a search again, uh, sorry, sequence. We notice that there's a con one constructor for the case where P loops, which is run sequence constructor. So if P loops, then the whole thing loops. So that's what we apply. We apply run sequence loop. Now we only need to show that if I call this with I, it loops, but I do know HR. So I do apply call EQ, and now I'm ready to keep it. Okay, that's it for this proof.